After you invest in your own dive regulators, an important part of keeping them working is cleaning them and storing them properly after every dive and getting a regular overhaul service done on them. And I want to look at what's involved in that overhaul service, uh, specifically at the first stage, and talk a little bit about who is qualified to do that. So regulators require a service over a specific time or number of dive intervals, and that's set by the manufacturer. Typically that's done at a dive shop or a service facility that's been approved directly by the manufacturer to do that service. The idea of this service is that it's a preventative service. So all the internal components, which you'll see here in a minute, are replaced inside this first stage and same for the second stage regulator. So these internal components are replaced well before they're anticipated to fail, okay? There's moving parts in here and those moving parts get wear, eventually they go bad. So the goal of the preventative service is that they don't go bad underwater, giving us a emergency situation there, or they don't go bad like on the dive boat or on a dive trip, causing us to miss a dive. Obviously regular service doesn't guarantee that things won't fail, but it gives us the best possibility of longevity and our regulators working correctly. Because it's preventative, it's really easy for people to accidentally skip their regulator overhaul service. If everything's working fine, we don't think to take this to the shop for someone to take it apart and replace all the parts inside. We need to stick with the manufacturer recommended service intervals to keep our regulators working well. I'll pop this apart real quick so that you can take a look at the internals. All right, so that's all taken apart. And we have a deconstructed first stage right here. We have our regulator body, our high pressure seat components, our diaphragm, our environmental seal, our DIN connector. And then we have all of the replacement parts. So what I'll do next is go through and replace all those parts as well as clean up the regulator. You can see some corrosion here on the body some corrosion on these parts here. Those need to get cleaned up with the brush and an ultrasonic cleaner. You can see the wear on components like the diaphragm versus a new diaphragm. It's hard to see on video, but this high pressure seat is worn in and has definitely been used where this guy is brand new. While the O-rings may look good and feel good, you know, these have experienced wear, and even if it is super premature, it's time to swap them out for these new O-ring from the service kit. So after I clean all these components, replace the O-rings, put it all back together, I'll test this regulator to ensure that it's functioning properly, and it'll go back into regular service. Now, traditionally, regulator service has been done at dive shops by qualified service technicians who are qualified through the manufacturer and the manufacturer restricts the service kits with all the O-rings and parts to those dive centers with technicians on staff. There are other manufacturers who allow individuals to do it and it's a really common question that I get, especially from tech divers who own a lot of sets of regs. They wanna save some money and they wanna do service themselves. They don't wanna pay someone else to do it. Now, I've been servicing regulators for years. I've serviced hundreds and hundreds of regulator sets. I used to work at a dive shop where I serviced regulators there. And I do service my own regulators. Uh, this is one of my regs that's in service that needs its parts replaced. As far as basic mechanical ability, regulator service is not very difficult. Uh, it requires some special tools. It requires an understanding of how to use tools uh, and you know what kind of solvents we can use to clean parts, but it's not really that hard. Uh, with that being said though, I don't think most people should service their own regs. I think you should take it to a dive shop. Uh, and the reason that I say that is because it's hard to stay current with you're doing something once every one or two years, okay? If you, know, you accidentally scratch this guy, well, now you've got to go find that part and get that shit from the manufacturer to replace because that's not included in the service kit. And the same goes for any part of the body where you may scratch the ceiling surface. The other thing that most people who haven't serviced a couple hundred sets of regs aren't going to encounter is diagnostic procedures. So your first service might, may go fine and then you run into a problem and you've got to figure out you know, how to solve that issue. So I think it's important for people to understand what goes into a regulator service, especially those who are curious about servicing regulators themselves. What I can say is universally a terrible idea is going to Harbor Freight and buying a Viton O-ring kit 
which Harbor Freight does sell, and I've seen people do this, and saying, well, that's cheaper than getting a service kit from a manufacturer, and I could go through and replace those O-rings. I buy a lot of stuff from Harbor Freight, not throwing shade on them. One of the reasons that that's a terrible idea is your O-rings or parts may have specific tolerances, and those tolerances aren't gonna be met in a generic O-ring box. Uh, we also have components that aren't available at stores that definitely need to be replaced, like our high pressure seats and our filters. So, you know, if you're looking that route, uh, do not do that. Uh, the other component is tools. It's a pretty significant investment with ultrasonic cleaners, magnahelic gauges, specialty tools, if your regulators require specialty tools. Uh, and then again, that diagnostic know-how, currency and experience. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of what goes in for regulator service. I'm not gonna sit here and run through replacing every single part. Uh, the goal here was to pop a first stage open, show you all the parts and components and talk a little bit about what regulator service really entails. Big takeaways here are regulator overhaul service is super important. Make sure that you're doing it at the intervals that the manufacturer suggests. Don't wait longer than those intervals. Have it done by a qualified service technician who does this a lot. Uh, if you're really interested in doing it yourself, you can look at those brands that allow user service, but I would advise against that simply for the fact of currency, tools, and diagnostic abilities. All right, so for more intel on regulator service, there's a, a great book uh, called Regulator Savvy. I think you can find it on the internet. Uh, that was the first thing that I read before I went to my first manufacturer uh, regulator service class. Another thing to look at is taking an equipment service technician class. That's a diver class. It doesn't actually go through how to service the regulator, but it does go through basic diagnostic procedures and care of the regulators. So take care of your kits and thank you for watching.